Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to Shifting Lanes. My name's Chad, and yes, once again, you find me in the C30, more C30 content, um, mostly because I've been driving this thing around a lot. Uh, the Mustang's been in the shop for quite some time, and it's gonna be another four to six to eight weeks until the transmission is finished being built, uh, which obviously the Mustang can't be driven without a transmission, so might as well make some C30 content. Uh, I've made a few videos, some of which you may have seen. I know you've definitely seen my uh, Before You Mod video, but in this video, we're gonna sit and we're gonna talk about the five things I hate about my Volvo C30. I'm not talking about C30s as a whole, I'm just talking about mine. It could be things I've done to it, things I haven't done to it, or just things I haven't gotten around to, etc., etc. I wanna make it clear, these are more like minor annoyances than things I, than reasons to not buy one of these things. By all means, if you have the means and you have the desire to buy a C30, do it. They are great, great little fun cars. They're utilitarian, they're safe, Again, they're they're crazy good fun, and there's a pretty strong aftermarket should you decide to go and modify it, like I do. Without further ado, we're gonna get into the five things I hate about my 2008 Volvo C30. Number five, the shifter. Now, it is a manual. While the throw might be a little long, the feeling of precision might not totally be there, it is still a manual, and therefore, better than any automatic version of this car, regardless of how fast they are. Manuals are just more fun. I don't really think I have to explain myself with you guys, but in some cases, automatics are quote unquote faster. Don't really care. Most of us aren't racing. This isn't a track toy. This isn't a quarter mile beast. This is something I drive for the fun of it. And it just so happens to have a hatch in the back that I can throw stuff in. I know there's some things that you can fix to make the shifter feel a little crisper. Uh, the rear motor mount or transmission mount is one of them. Just haven't gotten to it. They were making short throw or uh, I forget the exact name of it, but basically some things that help shorten the throw of these shifters never really got around to it because I never really heard a lot of great things about some of them in the long term uh, when it comes to like the cable and all this other sort of stuff so I never really pulled the trigger on one of them in hindsight I really should have should have done the R&D for you guys a small time YouTuber uh, probably probably should have done that but that that said it's just when you combine that with the ridiculously light clutch pedal which a lot of people will see as a good thing I do too because, well, you know, the clutch in the Mustang is heavy as hell. I can appreciate a light clutch pedal, especially when I'm in things like traffic or what have you. But a little bit more weight to it, a little bit more feedback on where I am with the throw of the clutch. Yeah, that wouldn't go unnoticed or unappreciated. I'm kind of nitpicking, but for something that's a performance machine, or in my eyes, a performance machine. I know this was never designed to be a performance machine from Volvo. It was just supposed to be a little hatchback with a little bit of performance. Um, yeah, I'd like a little bit shorter, crisper throw. Now, if you think this is just a gripe I have with the Volvo, <laughs> the Mustang shifter is a thousand times worse. It is awful. Why? Well, because the Mustang, has a shorter throw, but it's every bit as vague. You know how you do the wobble test to make sure you're in neutral? Well, it wobbles in third gear and it does that from factory and it has done that ever since 2015. It's just because the, the way the MT82 and the shifter mechanism was designed, uh, it was never going to be precise. It was never gonna have a great feel. And that is also one of the reasons why it's off being built because, well, you know, I, obviously very much want my cars to have a nice short crisp throw with my manual transmissions and even these little gripes are still better than automatics they just are number four and this is really kind of more of a personal taste than it is an actual i don't know something i'd really feel like i don't even know how to describe it but number four this thing is too quiet now, some of you might be saying, but Chad, it's fast, it makes over 300 horsepower, and it's kind of silent, doesn't that help make it a sleeper, or make it, you know, more refined, more civilized, more easy for your neighbors to live with, and all that other sort of stuff? Um, 
Yes, 100%. Still doesn't mean that I love it. I like my cars to be a little on the louder side. The three inch exhaust I have on this car, three inch downpipe and three inch exhaust from Elevate, while beautifully made, uh, I have to give them that, it is, I don't know, man, it's just too quiet. Uh, to the point where I have seriously considered cutting the muffler off this thing and just having one single three inch exit uh, to make it just that little extra rowdy. That's what I love about the Mustang. It's a visceral experience. It hits you even when you're going 15 miles an hour, where this, you kind of have to be driving at a particular speed for it to kind of reach that sort of experience type level. Anyway, on to number three. And number three is these seats. Um, they're heated, which is nice, even though I only really ever use heated seats because of it iffy back and heated seats help loosen my back. I use, use heated seats more in the summer than I do in the winter. At any rate, they're very well made. They're comfy and they just have no support at all. Now, I'm not cornering all that hard and I'm kind of really moving around in this seat. And I don't want to say it doesn't inspire confidence because you can kind of brace yourself up. I don't know, using the steering wheel, kind of wedge yourself in. Uh, you know, brace yourself on the center console here or on the door and stuff like that. I would like the seats to be a little bit more supportive because again, that gives you that performance feel. Well, money shifted there. Good thing I wasn't at the track. At any rate, I would just like a little bit more support because like, I don't know, maybe it's, some, it's something I didn't really notice until I got the Mustang, which has buckets, like full on bucket seats and it really kind of encapsulates you in the, the seat, in the car itself, uh, which when you're cornering hard or doing anything sort of like performance oriented, is really nice because it kind of just keeps you fixated and you don't have to focus or even think about where your body's gonna go and I go around that corner. You can think about what gear do I need to be in? Where do I need to brake? All that other sort of stuff. And this car wasn't really designed with performance first and foremost in the thoughts of the engineers. So I get it. Uh, is it easily fixable? 100%. Is it something I've gotten around to? Fortunately, it's not. These are the things I don't like about this car as it sits right now. This is all sort of nitpicking because, well, let's face it, the C30 is a great platform. If you're watching this video, you either own one or you're thinking about buying one, and that's for a very good reason. They're great. Moving on. Um, <laughs> the next two reasons, uh, the reasons why I hate this is um, me. Yes. I'm the reason I've made some poor decisions when modifying this car. Not that any of the parts are bad, not that I necessarily regret the outcome of what they provided, nor was I in any way, shape or form disappointed with the performance that they provided. I just kind of wish I had done things a little bit differently. And that brings me to the number two reason, which is the hot air intake. Take nothing away from the engineering involved in making that intake up front, it just so happens to sit behind a radiator, which gets warm, which heats up the air. And then your intake sucks that up and you're ingesting hot air into your car. Do things like intercoolers help with that? Yes, but as a rule, the colder air in, always better, regardless of what type of vehicle you have. Supercharger, naturally aspirated, or in this car's case, a turbocharger. The upshots to it are, and I don't know if this is gonna come off on camera, but um, you do get a lot more turbo noises. So you can hear the wastegate, you can hear the valve popping, you know, on the overrun, the whatever the on turbo valve is called that is effectively the blow off valve for this car. Um, you hear the turbo working a lot more. So like from a visceral experience where the exhaust is great for performance, not so visceral, argument could be made that the intake is the exact opposite. It does not help performance. Uh, I have yet to see something uh, that has been thoroughly tested that either matches or exceeds the factory airbox with a good air filter in terms of horsepower. Yes, big intakes will increase horsepower the first or second time you do maybe like a dyno run, but eventually heat soak gets in and the car pulls timing and you make less power. For me, all the noises are fun. Those aren't really the noises that get me going in a car. They're Again, they're fun, but I like to hear the car itself, the exhaust, the engine, 
that sort of stuff. So I could sacrifice losing that if the car was a little bit, say, louder out the back. I kind of look at that as performance, and I want it to be a good performance part. If you're thinking about a cold air intake, really for any of your cars, uh, unless it's an enclosed unit that is sucking air from somewhere other than the hot middle of your engine bay, um, save the money. Get something else. Maybe take your girl out for a nice dinner because uh, cold air intakes uh, have been proven to uh, yeah, not really do much. And on to the last, the number one thing I hate slash regret slash wish I had done to my 2008 modified Volvo C30. My biggest regret with this car is never installing an LSD. Is it something you use on a daily basis? Not that I can notice. I'm not exactly Ken blocking my way to work every single day. But I have been to the track. I have done some spirited drives, the Dragon, some minor track usage, as you were. Uh, and uh, yeah, the one tire fire, not so good. Not so good at launching, not so good at coming out of a slow corner with full beans. Limited slip dip would make all of that better. I really wish instead of doing things like even the cold air intake or even some of the other stuff around the vehicle itself, it, I really wish I had done one of those because it, it something I would experience a lot more. Like the cold air intake, for example, I could live without that. I don't need that. It doesn't really affect the day-to-day -day act of driving this car, the fun driving of this car. It doesn't affect it really all that much. But you can feel when you start to get that one one wheel starting to peel and yeah I would just I you could be so much more confident on little back roads like this without wasting all of the good horsepower that I put into this uh, in one tire just spinning and I mean even just accelerating hard and especially at the drag strip we could not launch this thing because the <laughs> the one wheel was constantly wanting to spin and you I mean, you cannot, an open differential car, if you try to launch it hard, one wheel will spin, one wheel will grip, and you're never gonna have good 60 foots. Not, that, again, that I'm making this into the last word in drag racing performance, I'm not, but it would be nice to do, to have the capability of actually showcasing what this car is capable of by running something that isn't, you know, a 15 second quarter mile. The LSD is, it's just something I would feel more whenever I drove the car, whenever I wanted to have fun with it. And uh, not doing that is easily, without a question or a shadow of a doubt, my biggest regret when it comes to modifying this car. If you have one of these cars, uh, after you do the downpipe, exhaust, some tuning, you know, maybe an intercooler, but even before all that, put an LSD in it. It should be one of your first mods. Uh, if it didn't, if it comes with an open diff because it just makes the car feel so, so much better. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what your biggest regret with your car is down in the comments below, uh, or just feel free to tell me I'm an absolute moron and uh, that works too. Uh, I welcome both. <laughs> but if you enjoyed the video, seriously, give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you get all of the shifting lanes to stuff as we release it. Uh, the next six months are gonna be huge for us. The biggest build we've ever done, the most powerful car we've ever done. Greg's gonna continue working on the Polestar. Uh, just a ton of really awesome stuff. Uh, you're definitely not gonna wanna miss it, so subscribe, notifications on. But as for this video, that's a wrap, and I'll catch you in the next one.